The day begins with Jesus on the Mount of Olives. The Passover is just a few days away. He instructs two of his disciples to go into one of the nearby villages and to acquire a donkey and her colt, which they bring back to him. Jesus sits atop them, and as he does so, he begins to ride down the Mount of Olives, through the Kidron Valley, and up into Jerusalem, drawing a crowd to him as they quickly begin to realize what he is doing. He's fulfilling prophecy, a prophecy that dates back to the prophet Zechariah from the Old Testament, where he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus is, for the very first time, outright declaring himself their king. People begin to recognize what he is doing, and so, as they see this, a crowd begins to form around him, and people begin to lay their cloaks on the ground before him, and they grab palm branches, and they begin to wave them before him and lay them on the ground. Two hundred years ago, the Maccabean family had overthrown pagan oppressors who were dwelling in the land of Israel and who were being rulers over the people of Israel and they overthrew them and rode back into the city and marched around the city in a triumphal moment that led to the Feast of Dedication, also known as Hanukkah. And during the celebration, people plucked down palm branches and they waved them before them to celebrate the fact that Israel was, at long last, delivered from their enemies. And so as Jesus marches his way upon this donkey into the city of Jerusalem, declaring himself king, people wave these palm branches, thinking that at long last, the Messiah has come to deliver them from the Romans. And as this crowd surrounds him, they begin to cry out in song. They begin to shout the word Hosanna again and again and again, and they call him the son of David, the Messiah that was to come. They recognize who he is. What they're doing is they're actually singing a song that once again dates to the Old Testament. It's Psalm 118. It says, Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Or, in Hebrew, Ana Yahweh, Hawoshiana, Ana Yahweh, Haslichana, Baruch Haba Beshem Yahweh. As they cry out, Hosanna, they're crying out for God to save them through this man named Jesus, this man who is sitting on a donkey and riding into the city. Some of the Pharisees don't like what they see happening here, and so they approach Jesus and they tell him to silence his disciples and tell them to stop singing. But he rebukes the Pharisees and tells them that even if the disciples and if the people were to grow quiet, the stones themselves would cry out. We can't know this for sure, but some people believe that we have evidence to think that at the same time that Jesus was entering into the city from one side, from the Mount of Olives on the east, at the same exact time Pontius Pilate, the praetor of Judea, was entering into the city from the west. And so many people at this moment might have thought that this was the moment when everybody was going to go to war. You have the Romans entering into the city from the west, and you have the newly pronounced Messiah entering in from the east. You have the songs of both empires being sung aloud, one by the masses of the people praising their king, and the other, the trumpets and all the instruments of the Roman Empire coming to meet in the center of the city. People are crying out for deliverance, but they don't know what type of deliverance they need. And so even at this moment, as people are crying out praises to Jesus, praises to God, Jesus begins to weep. And he weeps over the city of Jerusalem because he knows that in just a few decades, it will lie desolate and destroyed. And it's actually the Romans who will destroy them because Jesus has not come to destroy the Romans like they think he has. They're crying out for salvation and he will bring salvation but not the salvation that they think they need. Though they praise him as king, they fail to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. So Jesus goes down the Mount of Olives, through the valley, and up into Mount Zion. But rather than meeting Pilate in the center of the city, instead, he gets off his donkey. He walks up the steps into the temple. He looks around. And because the hour is late, he turns around 